we have the footage. Pro Israel protesters attack UCLA student encampment. I'm going to provide the footage and then the context and nuance. Here it is. The story has a lot of twists and turns. We're going to go down all of them with millions watching. And many people benefiting from this program called Indisputable. We just need 1% of the viewers to become a paid member so we can continue to bring this content to you. Now back to the show. Violence broke out early Wednesday. This was at a pro Palestinian encampment at UCLA. This was hours after the university declared that the camp, quote, is unlawful and violates university policy, end quote. These guys don't learn, do they? Just before midnight, a large group of counter demonstrators wearing black outfits and white masks arrived on campus and tried to tear down the barricades surrounding the encampment. Campers, some holding lumber and wearing goggles and helmets, rallied and defended the encampment's perimeter. Video show fireworks being set off and at least one being thrown into the camp over the next few hours, counter demonstrators threw objects, including wood and metal barrier, and a metal at a metal barrier, and at the camp and those inside. The fight with fights repeatedly breaking out. The violence is the worst on campus since counter protesters who support Israel set up a dueling area near where the protesters were camping. Some tried to force their way into the camp, and the pro Palestinian side used pepper spray to defend themselves. On one representative of the camp said the counter protesters repeatedly pushed. Over the barricades that outlined the the boundaries of the encampment, as some campers said, they were hit by substance they thought was pepper spray. Some people in the camp were being treated for eye irritation and other wounds. The extent of the injuries was unclear, though the Times saw several people who were bleeding and needed medical attention. A group of security guards could be seen observing the clash, but did not move to stop them. Here it is. Sad, isn't it? Let me tell you what else is sad. You go to a place where your moral compass transcends the narrative that they gave you. You look at the narrative, you say, This narrative does not make sense to me. Explain the narrative. Why does it make sense to Biden? Why does it make sense to Netanyahu? Why does this policy make sense to the university? Well, you see, they have entanglements, all right? They have interest, there's money involved, there's corporate dynamics, there's this institutional issue that some hold sacred. But it's important to note that while this is happening on the campus of UCLA, this tension is happening on the campus, this tension is a permeation, a reflection of the initial narrative that was transcended by many of these students. What I'm saying is, as Dr. King put it, no one can root out evil by becoming evil. 
No one can root out darkness by becoming darkness. The only thing that will make darkness flee is light. That is it. Darkness and light are not co-equals. When you shed light on something, you shed transparency. There is no fight. It provides no pushback. It is truth and truth stands on its own. Now lies seem to travel fast. I believe lies travel fast because they have a limited time to live. Truth lasts forever. The students who are fighting for the recognition of humanity are on the right side of this fight. I submit once again, because it cannot get lost in the narrative. There are pro-Jewish student groups and pro-Palestinian student groups who are fighting the same cause on these campuses, organizing together. That gets lost in the narrative. Typically, it's not even put in the headline. It's very sad because they would prefer the world to believe that Palestinians and Jews are adversarial to each other on these campuses, and it is simply not true. Once again, dismissing the reality of policy. Policy is the reason. The powers that be created the cause. They are the cause. What you're seeing is the effect of the cause. If you want to change the effect, you have to transform the cause. And that is at the beginning and the end of this saga, the policy. I remember last year, we were right here at Indisputable, defending our Jewish brothers and sisters because neo Nazis were on bridges, hanging signs and saying crazy things about Jewish people in America. I remember that. I remember as a member of the NAACP, the first time I read our charter years ago that said, co founded by these individuals. Well, they were Jewish men that co found an organization who love freedom. You generalize groups at our own peril. I don't want anyone generalizing black people. I don't want anyone generalizing Jewish people. No more than I want anyone generalizing Palestinians and calling them Hamas. But generalizing students who are acting antithetical, adversarial to the reality of freedom and peace to generalize those who do not agree. There's more to this story. At around 1.40 AM, police officers in riot gear. What do you think they're ready for? War, riot gear. They arrived, counter protesters began to leave, but the police did not immediately break up the clashes at the camp. I wonder why, which continued despite law enforcement presence up until 3 a.m. A line of officers arrived at the camp and pushed the remaining counter protesters out of the quad area. The police told people to leave or face arrest, finally. Some on campus said they were stunned. It took so long before officials stepped in to stop the clashes. Because I believe it's what they want. A Ayanya Roy, a professor of urban planning, social welfare, and geography, condemned UCLA's lack of response to the counter protesters. Quote, it gives people impunity to come on our campus as a rampaging mob. She said earlier Wednesday, the word is out, they can do this repeatedly and get away with it. I am ashamed of my university, end quote. Los Angeles Mayor Karen Bass condemned the violence saying on X, it was absolutely abhorrent and inexcusable. Assembly member Rick Chavez Zabur, Democrat out of Los Angeles, whose district includes UCLA, the campus, criticized university administration in a statement on Wednesday, saying that they had failed to protect their students. UCLA officials decried the violence and said they had requested help from Los Angeles Police Department. The situation was so distressing that the university canceled all classes on Wednesday. So the crackdown came on the same day that US House Committee investigating anti Semitism announced UCLA Chancellor Jean Block, pictured there, would appear to testify about his campus. The campus actions to stop bias and harassment against Jewish students. The Westwood campus became the first in the University of California system to move against an encampment. Others have been set up at UC campuses at Berkeley, Riverside, and Irving, along the colleges, universities across the nation. So keep this picture up for a moment. There's a group of students who were 
stopped from going to class because they were Jewish um, two weeks ago, I believe, maybe a week and a half. Small faction. But see, that kind of, of allowance doesn't allow you to transcend the narrative. What I'm saying is I appeal to the humanity of every person who loves freedom and peace. Don't allow them to hijack the narrative. Don't allow them to hijack the narrative because you're on the right side of humanity. Remember that what gains are made now are sustainable if done properly. The fight that is against you, the fight that is against me, the fight that is against Wozni, the fight that is against anyone who stands up against a murderous regime, who stands up for individuals who don't have the same kind of power and political voice. That fight is a righteous fight every day of the week, no matter what. Past events involving the encampments, according to Fox 11 LA. The Greater Los Angeles Area Office of the Council of American Islamic Relations on Monday called on UCLA officials to protect participants in the encampment to protect them. Pointing to a video that was posted online appearing to show someone releasing a backpack filled with mice into the encampment. According to a social media post, campus security was able to gather and remove the mice. In another confrontation at the campus days ago went viral as well. Here it is. He was called the N word by a demonstrator, obviously upset. I don't blame him. You know, the historical context of this cannot be dismissed either. The Balfour Declaration and others. Um, what are we seeing? This is not, this is not a necessity. It's not required. War is only an expression of the internal conflict of humanity. You have a different, if you had a different Israeli leader, you would likely have a different international reality. If you had a different United States president, you would likely have a different international reality. What I'm saying to you is that these decisions typically come down to just a few people in positions of significant power. If we are moving in unison, we can determine the political leaders who make these decisions. But if we are fragmented, we become, well, powerless to transform the policies that created the effect that you have today. Wise thoughts here. Yeah, just for a little context for the viewers, um, UCLA's campus is located in an area of Los Angeles called Westwood, um, which is essentially adjacent to Beverly Hills, uh, two very, some of the more affluent neighborhoods in the entire city, Los Angeles being a very affluent city. So you can imagine the demographics at play here in terms of what those people might like or dislike about. What's happening in terms of the demonstration on the UCLA campus? So I'll let people draw their own conclusions from that. I'm just really struck by one, USC for, for Pete's sake. I mean, USC, a private school uh, known for having a student body of some of the most affluent, influential people in Los Angeles. Just the idea that there would be some mega demonstration at USC of all places. I'm still kind of shocked by that. But you guys, I'm sure you guys saw the video of what happened at USC in downtown Los Angeles. Those cops were not playing for the peaceful protests. And just the idea that we could have that police response at USC, but yet these guys are throwing fireworks and being all kinds of violence, spewing all kinds of things and nothing. 
Nothing from the police to the people who actually meet out some level of violence. Again, you can draw your own conclusions from that. Uh, to them, uh, the, the violent people, the counter protesters, quote unquote, if you will, they don't present an opposition to the status quo. And so the powers that be are completely happy with their actions, no matter how illegal or how violent they are. And so I would just implore folks to keep that in mind when they see what's happening out there. Well said. We'll bring updates. Obviously, updates are going to continue to come, no doubt.